On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we are talking about Picard 208, Mercy, and 209, Hide and Seek, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to the Star Trek Universe podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. I am David C. Robertson. Hey, Dave. How you doing, buddy? Hey, been too long it's been too long had a i had a crazy week last week and couldn't get on to yeah. cover last episode so let's mm. get right into them man let's do this thing 208 sure. uh, 208 red yeah. dress right that's literally the only takeaway i feel like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was i was joking around with someone on uh that star trek podcast uh rick of starbase 66 he was like yeah i love those boots with that red dress and mm-hmm. i was like yeah yeah and he was like don't kink shame me i'm like no i'm agreeing <laughs> <laughs> i'm a kink agreeing i'm kink exalting <laughs> <laughs> uh but yes yes um thought you know <laughs> man i i you know I, i'm sorry i will be straightforward with you guys all of you guys out there i have not enjoyed the last several now. So, oh, wow. Like, yeah, no, the, I know the like two this, prior to this, yeah. the last week's, you didn't like. Yeah, I didn't like those, and I don't I don't like these two very huh. much. Like, there are elements that I appreciate, mm-hmm. but um, I am I am not really much in a favorable mood for, for either of these particular episodes, and I'm really sad about it. Yeah, I hear um, you, man. You know, I defend Brent Spiner, a lot and it'd be like, it was the editing it was the writing it was the directing no he was laughably bad he was he was laughably bad i thought he was particularly bad and i <laughs> i loved i loved the bringing back of elnor absolutely love i hated the, it oh well, here's the thing i love seeing him again i should say uh-huh but especially after our conversation last week we were like it just feels like they just have to use the same actors for some reason yeah. like it just felt like there's no reason that hologram would have been Elnor, except to give Raffi that moment, which like was nice. It was a nice moment. Well, I mean, if we're gonna go ahead and jump to to two oh nine, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just I, you were talking about Brent Spiner, and I, and I was just bringing that up because that's what we're. I mean, talking he was about last pretty week. bad in both. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I I do not buy that. Oh, so now holograms have share memories with the people who are dying. Well, he didn't say they shared a memory. Uh, he said he because sh- I, I rewound it. He did. Say no, that. he says his last thought of you were not of blame but of love. Which, How would you know that? Because he's looking at the guy. Like I, I assume this is. Pro- I, I'm, I'm. If my per- my interpretation of that was this is the same holographic system that has the uh, psychi- mm-hmm. psychiatrist hologram in it. It yeah. has it has a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge base in this hologram. Um, and so he saw the look on the face of. The dying, you know, Elnor, the look of love. Right. And also, he might just be doing that to help Raffi get over yeah. the thing she's trying to get over. The hologram is lying to her. Uh, possibly. Possibly. Maybe. It, it's easily retconned. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I was wondering about that, because it does seem like they might mm-hmm. be trying to say that, like, well, the thing that bothered me more than the more than that specifically was, like, which is why Elnor in general, and it seemed like they were saying, because Elnor is a badass. And it's like, yeah, but the hologram wouldn't know all his moves either unless yeah. they're unless they are saying that like everyone mm-hmm. who enters the Lazarena gets their brain scanned or something mm-hmm. <laughs> which is weird that that is a weird leap to make yeah i don't think any of it made sense i think it's just bullshit it was purely for and and this is this is what annoyed me about it it was purely for the like let's bring back the actor we like and let him be in one more scene or whatever it's like stuff that just doesn't make sense within the universe they've created, like mm-hmm. too. So Absolutely. it's like he's running around with uh, the mobile emitter. Why the whole ship is a mobile emitter? He had yep. his entire crew was was. Yeah, we've never seen a mobile emitter holograms. on that ship, right? No, and never then suddenly, to. suddenly he's got a mobile emitter. We don't even know that they have been able to recreate the mobile emitter. That was the first time we've seen that, right? Clearly, they could. Well, now we know, but like. <laughs> Up until now, they never we never knew that. I would be fine. I don't need like a rundown of what they've been able to create. Sure, but, sure, sure, know, sure. I could just go like, okay, cool. They they reverse engineered that shit. Awesome. Yeah. No, me too. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe and you know maybe if I go back, all of those bastards had mobile emitters. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't recall that. What's his face? His crew. Rios' crew. Yeah. Um, All the many yeah. Rios's. Should we actually talk about Mercy? <laughs> you know, like, the funny thing is, last night, at, uh, before this episode dropped, I was like, hey, you want to do a quick, or it was two nights ago, I was like, you want to do a quick episode about episode 208? And the reason I was, like, comfortable doing, like, a 10-minute episode is I have nothing to say about 208. I think yeah. the, the two things. I think that the Raffi and Seven relationship was really, like, well done. Like, I, I like uh-huh. them together. I like them running around downtown LA. Um, and I love Gerardi in the red dress. I joke about the red dress that she's hot, mm-hmm. but I actually love the visual of her in the red dress flipping yeah. off those cars. It just reminded me of, like, really great, like, terminator type stuff like i just love that um yeah and and of that. course her borg a group of people that was kind of wild and it's just like wow we're getting a full-on borg plot in this season which yeah i wasn't really expecting I, I even though we had the borg queen and you know obviously it was possible i'll say this i'm not sure if it was stupid that she was eating pieces of car batteries <laughs> But it sure did seem stupid. Like, <laughs> it's like she's just like a metal zombie all yep. of a sudden. It's like, yeah. rrr, rrr, rrr. no, like, she's making we? nanites, man. It's all good. Uh, yeah, uh, it does man. seem weird to have her eating them. Yeah, I agree. I <laughs> yeah. agree completely. I, it didn't bother me in the moment, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> Two two oh eight didn't bother me, but it also I, I had almost nothing to say about it. It just felt like it felt like a get here to get from here to there kind of episode yeah i well <laughs> i'll tell you this i'm i'm aggravated with that they did not make that guy do kane right you know he he was Duquesne kane and voyager he flew a wells class ship he's called agent wells nope turns out it's just because he played a you know an agent in 12 monkeys and he was obsessed with hg wells so terry metallis was like ha 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 okay, let's do that Dude, you knew what you were doing. That was a red herring. Mm. To to, uh, and I'm sick of this. Like I think it, you know, rather than make him Agent Fox Mulder, which is what they did, uh, <laughs> you know, it would have been way more interesting to see like the Confederation's version of the Temporal Fleet. Maybe they, you know, got to where the, they got to the same place, but you know, the 25th, the 24th centuries were hell, you know, and Picard has to like, be like, no, things were so much better for us before you have to help us. And he eventually helps, you know, like it could have been more interesting with, with the temporal fleet than with this, like, Hey, let's make a reference to enterprise because of carbon Creek. Mm. Do you remember that? Do you know that? What I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. That was the, that was who the Vulcans were. Is that what was going well, on? Well, in Carbon Creek, uh, they say that the Vulcans won't return for another however many years, and that co that actually corresponds to where that guy would have met them as a kid. So, like, okay. it was like a one. It was a fulfilling of a one line reference that I honestly didn't freaking need. I'd much right. rather have a good story. Yeah, yeah. I, it, well, the the thing that bothers me is the thing that we were bothered by. When he walked in the room, we had a lot of interesting ideas. Mm-hmm. Of who he could be, could be temporal fleet, could be a Q hiding his intentions, all mm-hmm. those things. And instead, it was the th- exact thing we were worried about. It was a one episode delay tactic. Yep. Uh, and I just, I just didn't need it at all. So that that entire plot line, I was just like, okay, like it was fine. It's just like you're making a three season show about Picard. Hmm. And I want you to explore the character of Picard and have him doing things. Um, yes, you're doing a lot in his mind, but like Picard has done so little in mm-hmm. either of these seasons, really. Yeah. Um, like, and I just really want Picard to have agency. I want it to be his show. And I understand they need to like build the new generation of Star Trek characters, and they're trying to do it off the back of the show with Rios and Raffi. Are they? I they are. They definitely is, are. Is that what they're trying to do? Well, I mean, me and you talk about it all the time. We like, <laughs> oh, we could definitely get into a Fenris oh, Ranger show or yeah, a, a Rio show. But if one thing has been made abundantly clear, the things that we want them to do, they will not do. <laughs> like the things that we think this would be really interesting, they're not gonna do it. Well, I definitely think these characters are very much intended to be like created so that even if this show is only intended for three seasons. 
these characters yeah. can continue on either in their own shows, spinoffs, whatever. Um, we'll see. I, I definitely think, I, I mean, like, I don't know that they're going to be able to do it or, or that there'll be the uh, support to do it. But I mean, I think there's more support for the, like a Rio show than there would be for a, like Rios on the Stargazer. There's a way more support for that than like almost any spinoff of Discovery, you know? Um, mm. Like, I, I, th- I think there's a lot to be said for like what they've done. I love these characters. I really do. But just Picard himself, I don't need a, sh- I, th- that episode wasn't about Picard. It was about this guy, this FBI agent that I like. Who cares? Like you said, it's Fox yeah. Mulder, but like really underdeveloped Fox Mulder. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I just had nothing to say, especially nothing to say good about that episode. Yeah, I I was not a huge fan. Um, going going into the well, okay, I did like Guinan Force projecting. That was dope. Yeah, that was dope. Also, did you hear a little bit of uh, Whoopi Goldberg in that? No. Some of her audio, when it, you don't see her face, you just hear Guinan talking to him at one point. Uh-huh. I could have sworn they slipped some Whoopi Goldberg they in may have, They may have. It may have been something from, because he, he was like having like little like echoes of like the future from her. Yeah. Their future conversations. So maybe, but um, it, that's the that's the big thing now and has been for like 15, 20 years. Uh, someone does something with their mind, like some mind power, got to have the blood trickling out of the nose. Sure. Like, this is how bad it is. My nose is bleeding. Like, I don't even have crazy mind powers. Like, I blow my nose and my nose is bleeding. Like, <laughs> what does that mean? It's all the cocaine, man. No. No. It predates the cocaine. <laughs> I stopped that last week. <laughs> you, did, did you see the bit with on that uh, on the um, Johnny Depp defamation trial when they were like, <laughs> trying to be like <laughs> are you saying that this box is not did not have cocaine in it? he's like well, I suppose some cocaine should have could have fit in there <laughs> man what a what a show that is what a show what a show uh, most interesting show on television this week um yeah it's, it's been a while I've seen big chunks of it uh no that's not true moon Knight's better uh well Atlanta's better <laughs> Atlanta, yeah. I actually, no, I haven't seen Atlanta. I liked Woke, though. I saw you post about Woke on a... Uh, woke is good. Uh, Woke's been really woke. good. Anyway, yeah. let's let's talk about 209. Let's do our job. <laughs> we might be doing the wrong podcast. <laughs> we, we should just do a, a podcast called Good TV Universe. <laughs> we'll only talk about good stuff. Yeah, I hope this um, show got slightly bad. Bye. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we got confirmation Q was dying, and I did like his performance. His, you know, he's just fading. He thought he was going to be going to the next grand adventure, and he's just fading. And I, I dig that man. Yeah, and he, we did get confirmation that he, you know, where he's like, I didn't send him to the past. Picard sent himself to the past. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was funny. So yeah, I love that, and and I I, I forgot about it. Now that I'm thinking back, I kind of forgot yeah. that that happened. Partially mm-hmm. because they took an entire episode to do the Borg thing without mentioning Q at all. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I get it. There are two plot lines to wrap up. But the way to do that gracefully is to tie them together. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. like, it's weird that I actually don't hate 209. I thought it was pretty good. But, uh, I, I yeah, yeah, it annoys me, though, that we've left the Q storyline behind completely after such a big moment to find out Q's dying. Mm-hmm. We we get a complete like lack of Q in the next episode. Hmm. So 209. I, you know, it, this is your classic siege plot line. Like I think it was cool, cool visuals, cool fight sequences. Um, Brent Spiner is atrocious. Uh, <laughs> As is whatever CGI they were using to place him in that field. In that vineyard. Oh like, yeah, yeah the, yeah. the CGI in the field was weird. It, it felt was like, like cartoons being like, <laughs> like, like the they were moving a little too fast to be human. It like was it like was Blues just- Clues. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's standing on like a cartoon background. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you there. Um, we mentioned we hated the uh, Elnor bit. I, 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 I liked it. seeing him. It's like it's like one of those things. And him saying "Oh my" when he found the sword was pretty fun. Uh, see that that bugged me just because I'm like, okay, you've got like soldiers, Borg soldiers running around, and you're like, 
eh, I don't want all these guns. How about a sword? I mean, it's kind of funny, but also it's like, one, it's really played. Because that's the scene we always get in movies where like, no, I'm going to go for the really shittier weapon. Right. Sure. Because I'm really good at it. Well, I'm assuming the thing is he has the sword. Mm -hmm. Were there guns available to him? Dude, he picked up like three guns and went, nah. The reason you go with the sword is it's silent. Like, that's the reason people go with the sword in in any any media. Because you can kill people without the people around them seeing you found them. Well, I mean, he just ran out in the middle of the room and just started hacking at people. Right. But then he goes back into the shadows (laughs) and then he comes back in and then he goes back. You know, he does does a number of, like, sort of stealth kills throughout that episode. Yeah. yeah. Like, it it makes sense to get sword. And I... And it's like what he's skilled with. It's what the weapon we saw yeah. the first time, you know? Which he's a hologram. He can be skilled with anything. Agreed. Yeah, it's a little dumb. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. It's just such a such a mess. Such a mess of things that I'm like, hey, it's the thing I like. Elnor. That, that, that guy I like. Yeah. But then there's all this weight of like, but it makes no sense he's here. Why? 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 Yeah. It's like they have thrown away every really cool opportunity they've had, and I. It's like they haven't ju- they haven't delved into the uh, supervisors, the mm-hmm. Gary Seven people. They haven't done really anything with that. Yeah, she's just that, there. She's just there. She's like their like uh, Q, uh, like yeah. from James Bond. You know, she's like we need the transporter. Yeah. We need some weapons. Have the supervisor bring them. <laughs> and then La Serena, like. They're like, oh, we need weapons. And I'm like, why didn't anyone take weapons? There's there's a ton of weapons that Elnor is choosing. Okay. Yeah. Now, you're talking about uh, you're in the middle of a battle and you choose the stupid weapon. Here's the thing I didn't like in the middle of the battle. Mm -hmm. Picard does not know at all that the Borg have been subdued. Not Mm -hmm. even a little. And he takes the time to tell a childhood story to the supervisor. They are sitting in the house... Brent Spiner's gone AWOL after that explosion. And like, there's, they're, they're just like sitting there. There's Borg everywhere as far as they're concerned. And like, he's just like, that's decides not, to sit the and first, have the conversation. Oh, that's not the only time he does it. Like, yeah. they have whole conversations in those tunnels. Right. About but in bullshit. Dur- during those, they're walking around, though, at least. But in that yeah. last one, after the explosion, they literally sit down like on a freaking park bench, and he tells her uh, the story of his mother. Like, and he's actually li- like the other ones. He's having visions, and then he'll like mention like, "Oh, I've been in this room once before," and those mm-hmm. make sense. Those are like him having flashbacks. But this was like, I need to tell you the story of my mother, and then he like sits down, and they just like have a conversation while the Borg are attacking his greatest enemy, the greatest threat to like life in the Federation. Yeah are like outside their doors about to destroy the timeline. And he's like, but let me tell you a story. Have a word as original. Um, it just, it's just really <laughs> like so stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, but uh, I had some major issues yeah. with, and I have had some major issues. Like I cannot understand how these people are fi- like, dude, I don't need, 20 minutes of a 59 minute episode to be like this really horrible actor of a kid walking around going, Mom, on, Mom, on. <laughs> like he doesn't seem like, you know, like his dad's sitting there going like, Oh, he's so smart. I'm like the kid playing him seems a little challenged. I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're doing with him, but also, maybe it's just where that is his brother? Like, where is his brother? It's like, well, it's- Robert, <laughs> I don't know how old Robert is supposed to be. Oh, because maybe he's just younger. Well, he can't be younger, and at least not a full no, blooded brother. His, well, his his brother is older. Uh, oh, like maybe he's already <laughs> he's, moved on to college. Yeah, he may have gone off to do a thing, but gotcha. I thought that was kind of the point. Was yeah, that he never did. Yeah, that, that, exactly. Anything. He never moved on. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Maybe he lived in the house next door or something. Maybe he's like living on, you know, in in the like whatever house so that he can work on the farm or something <sighs> mm-hmm. i don't know man i don't know like i don't dig the kid that's playing him yeah he doesn't seem like picard and he's talking about how smart he is and i'm like i just don't get it he doesn't seem smart at all he seems like he's just not all there mm. those scenes just felt forced as hell to me you know it just felt like they just we have to tell this part of the story and i I don't even like it's exactly what we talked about it being last week when he touches the door. I was like, he's gonna touch yeah. the door and then his mom's gonna get out 
and then she's going to do something bad to herself. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, That's obvious. That that was what we we, we saw in, in you know. It's just, and this was tragic and hard hard to watch, but it'd be. It's just tough because there's so many little things that in the back of my mind are like, why is this now? Like, why are we sitting down while the Borg are attacking? This could have happened before the attack. He could have had all these revelations mm-hmm. before the attack or after he finds out the La Serena is safe. Um, you know, it just it, it just doesn't make sense to sit down and have that conversation. And then on top of that, there's all the stuff that you you mentioned that uh, he meets his mother in TNG. No, he doesn't meet her. Oh, he doesn't. They actually, her. they actually like. He talks about her like she lived longer than she did, apparently. But they did, like, throw in a line where he's like, I used to imagine her, you know, as an older woman offering me tea and wanting a chat, which is what we got in in TNG. So, uh, yeah, where no one has gone before. So they, they, they rewrote continuity and they threw a line in there to try to make it work. Uh, okay all right so his dad was no longer the abusive piece of shit he was <laughs> always hinted that being right and and now his mother committed suicide at a very young age and uh whatever whatever man yeah uh, it, mm. uh, honestly this is embarrassing to me as a Star Trek fan, I feel embarrassed. Like yeah. I feel like, why are we doing this? Me too. And I hate this feeling. Me too, because this should be the most prestige thing Star Trek's got going for it right now, mm-hmm. and it should be all of the resources should be being put into making this show great, mm-hmm. because this has the best chance of making a future for the franchise. It has the best chance for bringing in old fans and new fans, and people who were kind of fans of TNG. Like, it, it's got yeah. so much potential. I sit down, sat down and watched the first season with my mom this week, and she mm-hmm. loved it. She, like, absolutely loved it. Like, there's a lot of potential here for this show to be really well done. And, and you know, maybe, you know, that she loved it, and I loved a lot of those episodes that she watched, too. You know, the first season, I really liked, a th- like, the first nine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and there's just a lot of potential there. And it just feels like it's being squandered on weird decisions and like just weird. The, the, the fact that they've like reused all the actors in weird ways is just distracting. Yeah. It's one thing when it's one person like Brent Spiner, like we said, but it's full. This is yeah. now that they've reused Elnor, it's like five people that they're just like reusing. Yeah. And I feel like they've they've done nine episodes. It should have been four or five episodes. Like yeah. so, like they've it's just posturing constant like well we'll do this thing we'll just right. do this thing we'll just why why are we doing any of this bullshit something i thought about 208 something that really bothers me actually he just had the episode where he realized the monster that he thought his father was was not a monster mm-hmm. then there's a line in 208 where he's like those weren't monsters those were vulcans there's like an easy connection that they could have drawn between him yeah. learning that lesson last episode and him like being like, sometimes the things we believed as children were threats aren't threats. Like we have to learn these mm. things and like move on. And sometimes we, I think they, they I, don't, I think they thought they were. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think they did though. <laughs> that's all they, that's all they did. Those yeah. were monsters. Those were Vulcans. That's the extent of the line. They're going to have, yeah. they're like, they're going to have Q. We're going to have Q say, all humans are stuck in the past, and that'll be our that'll be our connection. Right. This is our theme of the season. Yeah. Screw you guys. You suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it it really does feel like it's falling apart. And the thing is, like, there's all these little problems that I have, but like again, two oh nine, the overall thrust of the episode, I thought the Borg were interesting and cool. I like Gerardi the new Jurati Borg. But this is the thing. This I know where it's going, and it's going to yeah. go to, we jump into episode 10, they go back to the future, and she's the one in the mask. Mm-hmm. Which makes no sense. Like, it will make sense from, a, from their perspective now, but it makes no sense that she came to them asking... Like we come and we we now offer a choice or something like like yeah. like that whole thing was already in the first episode so like mm-hmm. that shouldn't have been in the timeline until they brought her back and changed the timeline. 
Yeah. It does. Uh, you know, and, and, paradox. and yeah, well, it's going to be paradox and it's just going to be a Borg saying you have such three dimensional thinking or whatever. And it's like, yeah, no, yeah. like you're, you're a paradox. Like, don't give me that shit. <laughs> They're just going to be like, well, this was always meant to happen. She was always like Picard was always meant to blow up the thing. And they were always meant to wake up another universe and go back in time. And it's going to be a 12 monkeys thing. Yeah. Jerry Metalis. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hey. <laughs> predestination paradox or whatever mm-hmm. the hell they call it um we we have a little feedback if you want to get into that i would love I to hear the feedback sure sure uh, uh i, I, I want to say something i want to say positive things though i want to like get and i really because ah. i really do like the borg thing like i love the i love gerardi for the most part i really liked her performance as the borg uh-huh. queen i liked her inside of the borg convincing her that th- they could go a different way this time. Like, like yeah. she, she's smart enough and understands the Borg enough and spent the last few episodes digging around her mind. Like, I love that stuff. Um, and I love the convincing the villain to be a new kind of creature that maybe like create a, create a universe of sevens or whatever, or create a Borg mm-hmm. full of sevens. Um, yeah, that was fun. People with freedom. I, I, I like that idea and I would love to see them really explore it in the the next season which i'm sure they will because they'll have to reuse that actor contractually all right let's <laughs> <laughs> well, what's their what's their feedback okay uh ferdinand uh cesarino on youtube says uh seven and rafi's relationship was covered in the audio episode no man's land surely the host of a star trek podcast didn't just skip that picard episode <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, we did. An audio episode? Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm um, sorry, like, that's fine. Like, I, I, I'm all for uh, extended content. I've read a couple of the Picard books, but mm-hmm. th- if it's not on the show, it's not on the show. <laughs> and what does an audio episode fall? Is it, like, prior to the last episode? It happens in between season one and two. It explores their relationship, Fenris, Fenris Rangers bullshit. Right, but they're still um, holding hands for no reason at the end of the episode season. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm all for right. the relationship. I really like them together. I'm just saying it feels really yeah. tacked on. Like they're never, they never introduced the idea. Probably because it's hard to introduce the idea of relationship. It's easy to just be like these guys are in one. Did you hear that whole thing about how they like gave the story of how they decided to put them together? No. Like right before the last episode, they saw them at a convention and they saw them together, standing together, and they were like, "Oh, they look hot together." I mean, they're not wrong, but still. Well, yeah, but that's not. <laughs> Just you isn't. don't make decisions, <laughs> huge character decisions, because of that. No, no, you don't. Oh um, God. Well, and it's just like I really do like them together, and I don't mean they're hot together. They, 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 which they are. Uh, but like, I, I, I think they are incredibly fun together. They bounce off each other well. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I like their arguments. I like their um, sort of like the the amount of care they have for each other while not sacrificing mm-hmm. who they both are because they're both obsessive in their own ways. Like, I think they fit. I really like it. It works really well. And, you know, yeah. give, being charitable to whoever said, said that in an interview <laughs> that they never should have said, like, yeah, maybe no, they, they saw, <laughs> maybe they saw them together and they were like, that would be hot. And they're like, wait. Their characters do have some overlapping like themes that would work well. Maybe we do that. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes, sometimes you get ideas from weird places. Sure. Um. So yeah. Um. <laughs> but <laughs> by the way, I didn't. I did not buy that that Starfleet wouldn't let Seven in. Like after serving mm. for so long on Voyager as part of a Starfleet crew, I just didn't buy it. I don't know, man. Like the the, the Starfleet we come back to is the same Starfleet that decided to abandon the Romulans. Nah, something else I don't, believe, I don't I never really completely bought. Yeah. But whatever. Whatever. Metallus has said that maybe it looks like we're going to get into some more like why the why Starfleet is the way they are now because of stuff after the Dominion War. Interesting. So uh yeah, if we could get some of that, yes please. Um I like that um, idea. I I love the idea of bringing in the Dominion War at all and mentioning it would be nice. Like, are we uh, going to blame the Dominion War for Star Trek sucking? As <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, nah. it's just a bummer, man. Because I really like it's all these little little nitpicky things that bother me, but it just bothers me because it shows a lack of care 
mm-hmm. for the show. Like it just shows yeah. a lack of stewardship, and that like, really bums me out. It's like when I watch like quality science fiction, like Severance. Don't I haven't seen it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's fine. That's fine. You don't have to, have, but. When I watch something like that, and then I watch Star Trek, and I'm like, no, Star Trek should have been the better thing. Yeah. Why? Uh, yeah, anyway. you got you got all this cachet, and I, it's hard, because I know Star Trek is also niche, so it's like, it's a hard thing to do, because it's hard to make good Star Trek, because you've got fans who want a very specific thing, and they all want a very different specific thing, <laughs> and mm-hmm. like, it's not an easy task. But it's just like the quality level should be kept high. You've already you got yeah. this you got this brand, you got this chance to make something that people are gonna watch. Like it needs to have at least the like thoughtfulness of, of other TV. Yeah. They're just giving us these mystery boxes like, oh, Picard walks through the door, what does he see? We've been we've been teasing that shit for however many episodes, a whole season almost. Mm-hmm. And we all knew that she was gonna be dead. That she was going to be have hung herself, or something bad was going to happen. Like it was definitely wasn't a mystery that like something bad was going to happen. But they treated it like yeah. it was going to be like some big like reveal, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, her hanging herself. I, I will say this because he mentions her in TNG, and we thought she was alive based on what he said. Uh-huh. And in this episode, they use that clever like she. I I often thought of her as an older woman or whatever. Like it was. <laughs> kind of a reveal because i i up until the very last minute was thinking like no but he mentions her in tng she's alive wait uh-huh. no she's a lot oh okay they either changed it or and then they threw that line and i was like oh okay all right they did yeah. surprise me with what actually happened i just thought she was gonna I mean, we talked about it two episodes ago like no she's not gonna die because she's alive yeah. but then yeah i i suspected they were gonna have her commit suicide and that they were gonna just ignore her TNG. So I'm at least happy that they gave the line. Yeah. That, that part didn't bother me so much, but it, I, I agree. I, I guess I wish they just treated all of that in the same episode. You know, mm-hmm. and I guess it's two lessons that Picard is learning to forgive himself for what he did and to forgive his father and like understand that his father wasn't a monster. Those are two different lessons, but I kind of feel like that story was so tied together that it could have mm-hmm. been handled well in a one thoughtful episode. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on to some other feedback. Yeah, yeah, throw some more feedback at me. HLB Comer says, you missed the most important uh, Metallus question. Will some of the classic Star Trek writers return for the final Picard season? And he said no. So we will get the same garbage writers that already ruined Discovery and Picard. They will continue this weekend at Bernie's with Star Trek's corpse until there is nothing more left to destroy. <laughs> oh, yikes. What? I don't think it's all that dire. <laughs> and of course the other writers are coming back. They've all got their own, like they're running their own shows and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Ronald, Ronald Moore is doing outlander. Everybody's busy or dead. It so, would be rad. Or if tired. Ronald Moore came back into a show. I would be it like, would, it would really on board with Ronald Moore coming back and running a show for Star Trek again. I would too. Like, I would love it if they brought him back to run a show. But as long as he's got his show running, he's yeah. not going to. No, like, no, no, no. I don't, and I don't think Picard would be the show I'd want for him. Like a no. Curinary show, or like a you know whatever, um, a Wharf show. Like, give me any of that. Yeah, oh, I, I mean, a Wharf show about him, like you know, doing whatever he's doing now. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to come up with something. We're like, we'll find out. We'll find out in season three of Picard. Yeah, it'll no, probably no, no. be something lame. Like he's he's got like a prune vineyard. <laughs> you next, know, it's next to Picard's, it's just a prune vineyard yeah, next to Picard's it's just wine like, vineyard. We can't figure out anything for these people to do that's interesting. And they like live next door, but they don't talk. I mean, they never really talked. <laughs> 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 what well, you never speak to Picard, to Picard? He will not cut down that tree, and it is blocking the sun from my window. <laughs> I do not have a good morning view. <laughs> uh, but no, like all the DS Nine <laughs> stuff with like the 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 Klingons and like getting a little backstory on like Worf and like what's gone on in the last twenty years with the Klingons and how he's relating to the Klingons now and how they're relating to Starfleet and like, you know, really seeing the Kling- seeing the Klingons and Starfleet in a more um 
positive place because they uh-huh. after I, I assume after the Dominion War they would continue to be sort of allies and that would continue mm-hmm. and it'd be interesting to see like what if the Klingons got brought into the Federation you know what I mean like how what would that mean yeah. you know um, or, or 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 if like some want them to and some don't you know whatever mm-hmm. I I could totally see a really fun plot line there and with D- his DS9 experience they've touched on all that with Worf so of course when did he leave DS9 well it was the last episode oh okay. DS9. So he was so, there till the end. Okay, for some reason, yeah, because he, he was going to he was going to be like an ambassador. No, no, no. Then, I'm talking about Ronald D. Moore. Sorry. Oh, Ronald D. Moore. Oh, he, he yeah, at the end of DS9. That you were talking about Worf. Great. No, no, <laughs> yeah. He was the last episode. <laughs> um, yeah, Ronald D. Moore left DS9. He went over to Voyager uh, when DS9 ended. He was there for two days, and he he got fed up and yeah. left. See, yeah. So that's the thing. Like Ronald D. Moore is so good at knowing how to weave canon in without making it distracting and without like fan service without destroying what you're trying to build. <laughs> yeah. Um he's so good at it in, in DS9 and I think he'd be perfect for something like a war show. And yeah. he's already done so well with the Klingons and, and the Federation relationship. Yeah. More importantly, I just want him to do whatever he wants to do. Oh uh, yeah, sure. I, I have you watched Outlander? Nah. Well then shut up. <laughs> Why? I still I want the guy to be creatively fulfilled. I just haven't seen his shit. I mean, <laughs> support it then. Know. Support it then, Dave. <laughs> I will get to it. I actually plan to get to it. I've I've seen the first like five or six episodes, and it is uh-huh. very. I hear it gets really good, and I I mean it, it wasn't bad. Like from the beginning, it's pretty good. Yeah. but it is very much like, uh, it's a love story show, and I have a hard time staying super motivated through those. Like I yeah. like a good love story, but kind of mixed in with my genre television, and this yeah. is more like genre television, kind of on top of a love story, and I'm just yeah. like less interested. Yeah, I like I like uh, I like Ron, so I'd like oh, to see too. him get to do whatever the hell he wants to, even if I don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? Oh, me too, man. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> we, we, we got a bunch of feedback. I'm going to skip some because some of it's not really relevant okay. um, to anything for these two episodes, but we will get to it uh, in a later episode. One last thing. Stu Little over on Twitter says something that bothered me about, I think it was like episode, or it was either Mercy or the episode before that. He says, uh, like the newsroom did in one episode, the main character has a conversation with an imaginary version of their father without realizing it because apparently they forgot, they completely forgot what their dad looked like. No, um, now I, that, I, I can't speak for the newsroom. I did see it, but I don't remember what the what the uh, context of that was. No, I don't either. But you often see that trope in television because it's a real thing. It's called uh, disjunctive uh, cognition, I think. But it, and it's something I do. Like I will dream, and I'll be like hanging out with someone that I don't recognize. But I know who they are or like I will know someone or I'll be hanging someone uh, hanging out with someone who looks like someone I know and I won't know who they are until like later on in the dream. And I'll be like, oh, you're Matt. <laughs> or <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I definitely have dreams like that. Um, a, like another version of that is like when you were your adult self and you are for some reason back in another place in time that happened way back in the past. But you're your own. You're your age now instead of your age then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a different form of disjunctive cognition. Hmm. So, but yeah, that's a thing that, that's uh, very common actually uh, in dreams. And uh, so I think I, 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 you know, I'll shit on these episodes as much as I can. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but you're wrong, Stu. This shit's real. <laughs> <laughs> it's real in my mind, in my mind, in Picard's mind. <laughs> Anyway, that's all I got, man. Let's, cool, man. Let's wrap her, well, let's wrap her up. Thanks, guys, for joining us on the Star Trek universe. Uh, we'll be back uh, real soon with more podcasts. Uh, we're going to. More bitching. We're going to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, does Strange New World start next week? May 5th, man. Dude, I don't know how I'm going to do it. We got. Well, you won't. <laughs> well, as last week proved. Well, last week was. My fam, my mom was sick. I had a lot to do to help her out, but like, my, I uh, mean, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be like, I, whoa, I've got to make sure I get that, uh, you know, uh, Strange New Worlds premiere over Doctor Strange. MCU takes total precedent. The last Moon Knight is May fourth. 
Yeah. Uh, then we've got Doctor Strange, May 5th, and and, and the two episodes of the, yeah. the finale of Picard and the uh, introduction of Strange New Worlds. Like, that's so right. much content on one day. I'm, I'm really excited, but within 24 yeah. hours, I don't know how... We'll, we'll probably have to cover... Maybe we'll be able to hop on, like we did when... Uh, they overlapped. Maybe we'll be able to hop on and do a quick one for one of the two and then, you know, yeah. the other of the two a couple of days later. Maybe so. I'm just saying, you know, numbers wise, Star Trek ain't the ain't the winner there. <laughs> well, you know. Like I love Star Trek. You love Star Trek. We want to talk about Star Trek. That's not what this is about. This is about numbers and time. And in this case, Doctor Strange and Moon Knight are your sick mother. They take precedent. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Uh, Moon Knight is my sick mother. That's a good point. Uh, all right, guys, we'll be back or sometime next week to talk about uh, those two episodes. Peace. Jolan True. Live long and prosper. Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 